Hi there, this is Jonathan Nittuck with Procept Associates. Today we're going to talk about decision modeling. So this is yet another uh, new technique that we've identified in BABOC version 3, and this one is BABOC section 10.27. So decision modeling, you know, what is it? The first thing to understand is it is not decision analysis. So decision analysis, we're talking about helping our stakeholders to make a decision, you know, expected monetary value, you know, what might occur if you make this choice or that choice. Uh, so that's usually for maybe uh, driving out a solution design or selecting a solution approach or something like that. That would be decision analysis. So that is not what we're talking about here. We're discussing decision modeling. So we're modeling how decisions are made, usually within a solution. So these could be automated decisions that are driven kind of by some business rules, or they could be a human decision that we're also trying to model so that we can uh, understand how the actors in our solution are behaving and how they're making their decisions, right? So decision modeling. Decision modeling is based on logic. So it comes from that kind of branch of mathematics that talks about, you know, and or not and all of those, uh, you know, kind of fancy things. Uh, so it is based on logic and our decision modeling can take a lot of different forms. So we can do a table for our decision, we can do a decision tree, we can write some pseudocode, uh, and we might do a decision relationship diagram. So a lot of different ways uh, that we can potentially model and share and collaborate with our stakeholders on a decision model. So the first one we'll take a look at here is the decision table. This is definitely a very straightforward approach, right? So we're going to create a table. Uh, we're going to create a series of columns. Those columns are going to include the inputs and they're going to include the outputs. So sometimes, you know, you might only have one type of output, but uh, you can have certainly different outputs that are all based on the same input parameters. Then you might as well put them in the same table. Sometimes you'll, you'll see some things there as we'll uh, discuss. So you're going to identify which ones are inputs, identify which ones are outputs. Uh, in terms of the rows, the rows for your table, you know, you're going to create that in some kind of a structured way. For each input, you need to identify what different kind of values can that input take, right? So if it's a binary, it's going to be yes, no. There's only two kind of forms that that input can take. Um, your input might have some ranges, as we see here for age, you know, less than 30, between 30 and 49. You know, we identified three different age ranges here. So for each input, you need to identify what the potential input values are. And that's going to tell you how many rows there are, but you have to multiply these out, right? So in our case here, there's uh, two inputs for this example is, you know, getting approval for a mortgage or making a decision on whether an applicant is going to receive a mortgage. Uh, we're going to consider three inputs, their balance sheet, their credit score, and their age. And we have two types of balance sheet, strong and weak. We have two credit scores, strong and weak, and we have three types of ages. So when we multiply those out, two times two times three, uh, that is how we get 12 possible combinations of the inputs. So the key thing with your decision table is you have to identify all of the possible combinations, right? If you, if you miss a combination, you're missing a potential scenario that might occur. So this can grow very quickly, right? If you get, you know, uh, six type of inputs, even if they each only have two, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, two, two to the six, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. You got 64 rows in your table. So it, you can see that this could grow very, very quickly into a very large and kind of unwieldy table, depending on the number of inputs that you have and the number of potential values that those inputs can take. Uh, also, I'd like to point out here kind of the structure, right? Uh, create this in an organized way, right? Find that furthest right input cycle through the um, the potential values that it might have. So you can see here a cycle of three. And then in the next column, you know, your cycle is going to double, right? So you're going to have three, uh, three of the first type, uh, three of the second type, because of our first table is based on three. And then you're going to double again, double again. So doing it in that kind of structured way makes it a lot more readable, makes it a lot more easy to understand and also ensures that you, again, have captured all of them. So creating those inputs and structuring them in, in a table in kind of a, a nice, clear, and organized fashion, let's say. So then our outputs, 
who's going to provide those outputs? It's going to be the stakeholders, right? So now it's a very simple exercise of reading them each row, right? Uh, so, okay, we have an applicant. They've got a weak balance uh, sheet, weak credit score, and they're under 30 years old. Are you going to give them a mortgage? No, no way. Uh, do they require insurance? Well, it's kind of a moot point, right? If they're not going to get the mortgage, then we know it doesn't matter. Uh, we're not going to decide if they're going to get insurance. They're not getting the mortgage in the first place, right? Uh, so, very easy now because we have a table that we can just run through these one by one, asking our stakeholders, what about this? What about this? What about this one? And then they can provide some answers. So, it's a kind of a brute force way of, of going about it, but it is a table. It's pretty clear. It's easy to read, and it's definitely going to be effective, and it's going to be complete. So those are some, some good things in terms of the quality of our requirements. The next way that we might model a decision is to look at a decision tree. So uh, we can see one on the screen here, and what we've done is uh, we're branching at basically each of those different inputs, right? So our first input, you know, balance sheet, you know, strong or weak again, and then, you know, the next decision and branching out. And then when we finally get all the way to the end of the branches, we're going to describe what's going to happen with the outputs, right? So does this mortgage get approved? Do they require insurance? Uh, this is a more visual way, definitely, of displaying our decision, of modeling our decision. And stakeholders can pretty easily, you know, trace through and follow, right? So, okay, if, they, if we have a candidate uh, that has this, but not that, and they're this old, then boom, you know, we can see what the result is going to be. So, this is a, a great way to visually model uh, that decision, uh, again, for our stakeholders. So, depending on the type of stakeholders, depending on the number of inputs, depending on the number of um, potential values that you might have, you know, you might choose to create the table, you might choose to create the tree. Those things will both work, but I will say they are a brute force approach, right? We, we are doing every possible combination. So as I said, if your number of inputs really grows, or even in a simple case like this, you know, it can create a, a large number. And the description that we get at the end, the model that we get at the end is, I can say it's not very intelligent or it's not very elegant. It's just very factual. So sometimes what we might want to do is see if we can take that model that we first created and see if we can simplify it, right? Uh, can we identify some relationships between the inputs and outputs, you know, now that we have that table or tree in place? So let's go back to our example with the table. Uh, and actually, let's take a look at this input column of the credit score and the output column of a mortgage application. If you look carefully here, we can see here is they are equivalent. Every time the credit score is weak, the mortgage is not approved. Every time the credit score is strong, the mortgage is approved. What that indicates to us is that actually the balance sheet and the age are not truly inputs to mortgage approval. Right? Mortgage approval is directly and only related to the credit score. What an interesting development. So you can have situations like this where you know your your stakeholders, when you ask them, so how do you determine a mortgage approval? Well, we need the balance sheet, the credit score, and the age. But then after they fill in the table, it turns out, actually, this is not the case. But really, the credit score is the only thing that you need to determine mortgage approval. Those other two inputs are definitely going to affect the, the, the next column, the insurance column, uh, but they don't really affect mortgage approval. So this kind of simplification is very important. If I were to redraw the tree now, uh, I had to move some things around, right? Because my uh, first input that I'm actually going to consider is the credit score. If the credit score is weak, well, you don't get the mortgage. End of scenario. Uh, then if it is strong, then we you know, have those branches to determine the other results. Uh, so this tree is a lot more simple. It's a lot more easy to understand. Um, and But something very important has happened here, right? Which is we have, by simplifying this decision model, We've driven out some business rules and we've driven out some requirements that weren't previously clear to our stakeholders. So the simplification is a very important step. Uh, the example that I had was very easy, right? Those two columns being equivalent, no, I was able to visually pick that out and, and see that. Uh, that's not always going to be the case. Uh, so there is a more formal method that you can use to do that simplification. 
simplification goes back to that branch of logic that I mentioned earlier on, right? So uh, George Boole is uh, kind of the person who developed this, this field, and we actually call it Boolean algebra. So you can actually uh, take these variables and, and arrange them into a formula um, that says, you know, this output is based on these kind of inputs. So we're not going to go into the scope of that in this video. Uh, and probably as a business analyst, it's not necessarily something that you want to go and study this ancient mathematics on. However, uh, it's important to be aware of and, you know, find the person that can help you with that, which is probably going to be, you know, an application developer that's on your solution team. So there's a, a theory called the Morgan's Law. Uh, he was a contemporary of uh, George Boole and came up with these two premises, right, that not A and B is the same as not A or not B. Uh, leave it to you to draw your know, Venn diagram and to see that relationship. And the second relationship is not A or B is the same as not A and not B. Uh, using these relationships, you can actually take that original formula and convert it back. You kind of convert it one way and the other way, back and forth, and you will simplify. And if you had done that exercise on uh, the decision table that we had and those results that we had, it would have become very clear that, you know, Mortgage approval is, you know, completely and solely based on the um, credit score, and it is not related to to the other inputs, right? So there's a formal way. Sometimes you can pick these things up visually, but there is a formal way. And the really important message here is the importance of the simplification, right? That simplification provides, as I said, a clear understanding of the true nature of the solution, of the true nature of the decision uh, and is a key element anytime you're going to do a decision modeling. Thanks again. This has been John Finita from ProSep Associates. If you have any questions about this content or would like to see some more training and content that we have available, please take a look at our website. Thank you.